Go. Hello and welcome to Print It to Play It. Today we're printing Outrider from Dicefest Games, designed and illustrated by Greg Lewis. Outrider is a Mad Max style car combat game. Each player has a car and they drive around shooting each other until only one's left. First we have to build it. This game consists mainly of cars and counters. Here are our files out of the download. And if we look at one of these, the cards are double sided, but they're designed not to be printed front to back, but to be printed on a single side and then cut out. So you fold on the dotted line, cut on the gray lines, and you glue them together to get your double sided cards. This is nice in that we don't have to print things double sided and we don't have to worry about whether they line up. But it also means a lot of pages and it gives a little bit of problem with how we want to do this. Um, I see two options here. I think we could print on cardstock, just fold them over and glue it and get a good thick card feel. Or we could print it on regular 20 pound paper and glue it onto cardboard to make more of a tile kind of structure. I've decided to go with the card, so we're just going to get these printed on cardstock and fold them over, glue them together. So let's get these sorted into how we want to do them. So here are our files. This looks like Yes, this is our rule book, which looks like it's designed to be 8.5 by 11 double sided. So I'll just be printing this on my own black and white printer. It's not imperative that this be in color, so I'm going to just skip it because I don't want to pay to have the rule book in color. It's not really worth it to me. So that's a simple print. We're not going to put that. Well, let's make folders for these things. We need a print at home folder. We need a print on cardstock. And we need a folder for things to print on regular paper. So we'll put our rule book in the print at home folder. Dashboards. Oh. All right, this is giving me problems. It keeps printing, bringing it up on my second monitor. So the dashboards are the fold over, so they go on cardstock. Maneuvers are the print and fold over, so they go on cardstock. Map. Now this is interesting, because if we look at our properties, we'll see that this is a 22 by 28 inch map. I really don't want to go to the expense to print a 22 by 28 inch map because it's like $20 a page. Or I think the lowest I was able to find is 12, but that's for just paper. So I'm not going to print this at all. I plan to do something a little different when we play. Uh, we'll get to that later. So these ones we're not going to print at all. Tokens. These we want to have on cardboard. So those get printed on regular paper. And the cars are the fold over front and back, so they get cardstock. Vehicles go on cardstock, that's it. And that's everything sorted. So now I need to go get these printed out, and we'll see about actually making the cards. Welcome back. Here I am with my printed out materials. 
you've got a whole bunch of sheets of cards. We've got a book, which I already stapled together. I printed it double side and stapled it together. So there's the instruction book, just some staples along the edge. Not a lot to that. We have our cards and we have our counters. We're going to start with the cards. Now we're going to do these in several steps. First, we're going to score along the dotted line and we're going to fold it over. Then we'll glue up the back, seal it, cut them out, and then snip the corners because rounded corners are better than non-rounded corners. So I'll go through doing one page and the rest I'll do off screen. Biggest thing for this score is to make sure that we get it on the line. And there's a bit of space. You gotta be careful if you put the straight edge right up against the line, you'll end up making a nice straight line a little bit off to the side from where you actually want to score. So you gotta be careful about that. Also, this is a good surface. I have this cloth over a hard backing. So that bit of softness will give it some push that'll let it that'll let the paper deform and give you a good a good score. If you're doing this straight on a wooden table, first off you could put dents in your table, and second, it wouldn't score the paper as well. So I seem to have gotten that approximately in the right place. We'll fold it over, give it a nice crease with a fingernail. If you don't have fingernails, you could use just something that's hard to get it nice and folded flat and crimped so it'll lay flat. Now we'll glue up one side of this. We're leaving the edges on so we can go make sure that we glue past and make sure everything is glued nice and smoothly. So we'll give this a nice coating. making real sure to get past where it needs to be glued. Better to glue a little bit extra than to have a piece that's not glued. As I know I've said before, but if there's one little corner that can come up, the whole thing will just peel right apart. You know, this stick glue gets real, glue in general, gets really finicky about places that aren't covered. So we'll be real sure about it. Fold it back over. Nice and smooth. Give it a good press. And once we've got that all together, we can cut it out and find out how accurate our score was. That looks pretty good. All right, let's clip the corners. Hopefully this will fit with the double-sided cardstock, yes. And there we have it. One nice, bring it up a little closer. trouble with my orientation. There we go. One nice card, all ready to go. I just need to do that about 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 38 more times, and we'll be good. So, I'll be back when I've finished all of these and we'll talk about counters. 
I'm back. Here are the cards all cut out and all punched. And there's rather a lot of them. We've got a couple status keeping. We've got three attack cards. We've got some cards with smoke or rubble. Got a bunch of movement cards. We've got some cars. So those up there are looking good. And we've got dashboards to go with the matching cars. That's most of the basic setup right there. All we have left to do is mount these counters. Now the counters are going to go on this comic book backing board. And they also use the fold and cutout method. So I'll show how to do one of these and then I'll go back to, I'll do the rest off camera. So for these, we'll give them a little trim. While I like to leave some extra when I'm gluing, you don't want too much extra. You don't want a whole bunch flopping around. So we'll just make sure we've got a little bit extra for each of these and give the rest a trim. Now we'll score this like we did the cards. Don't have to push down quite so hard on this because it's just normal paper. So it'll score fairly easily. We'll fold it to get the line defined. And smush it down. Get a nice crisp fold there. Now, let's see, we can't put this along this edge because it's too long, but we can do the long edge. It'll fit there. So we're going to glue up this inside and wrap it around the edge of our backing board. Now, but to glue that, we're going to need a throwaway piece of paper. So I've got a throwaway piece of paper just to keep from getting glue all over the place. So we'll get this glued up and we'll wrap it around our cardboard. Now it's important to get this all the way into the crease. You don't want any extra flopping around. So we'll make sure that we push it all the way down to that crease. Smooth it down as tight as we can. And get this gluey paper out of the way. And press it down flat. So now we've got that, we want to cut this off nice and straight so that we can do the next one along the same edge and just work our way across. To make sure we get it straight, we'll use our old friend Carl. If I do this right, I can trim it right to the edge so that I don't have to cut again. Let's see, does that look about right? Let's see how that works. And I got it just a little bit off. Uh, let's see if I can get this with Carl. We'll push it down, we'll push it right up against, and then we'll give it just a scooch in. 
Let's see if we can trim off the ah. Uh, got a portion of it. Oh, but that's actually way worse than it was. Sometimes you just got to stick with the scissors. All right, I'm going to take off more than I'd like just to cut off enough that I can cut it. So they're not going to be quite square, but oh well. All right, well, that'll have to do. And then we'll just snip these off this way. This just might be one of those games that gives you more counters than you need. Just because, you know, they say, well, we don't know how much we need, but we've got this much space. So we might as well just fill it with counters. But anyway, here's our start with the counters. We've got plenty more to make, so I will go do that and show you the resulting pile. Then we'll get into some non-standard sorts of things. Things that didn't come with the game, but I think will enhance the game a little bit. I'll be right back. Here I've finished cutting out all of the counters. We have lots and lots of little counters here. These ones are for showing your speed. This is for your, these are armor tokens. There's unused and used sides. There are your skill numbers. These are skill point numbers. These are used to show when you attack. And I'm not sure what the green arrow is for. But that's all the counters cut out. So next we have extra things. In this case, I found some buildings. I went to Google and I searched for paper buildings post-apocalypse and I found a site with all kinds of print and build, you know, print and fold structures and all kinds of other things too. I'll put the name in the comments and a link to it because it's a really neat site. I managed to find a bunch of little sheds and things and here's a building for I believe it's an auto dealership or it's some sort of anyway it's a little building with some parking spaces out front and a little shed. I'm going to build one of these. I think I'm going to do this top building here. I'll do this one on camera and then I'll do the rest off so that we don't have to waste a lot of time watching me do stuff. But for these buildings you just we'll clip out the one that I'm using. And get the rest of this stuff out of the way. Now these generally they have little tabs that you use to put them together. You probably can't see that at all. There are little tabs along the edges that you fold underneath and glue to the other parts. So it's just a matter of cutting a whole lot of stuff out and gluing it together. So I may get quiet while I do this because this takes a bit of focus.
silly me. I thought this was two separate buildings, but this is, or I thought this was one building, but this is one building and this is a separate building. So we'll put set this one aside. We'll just do this one. For, the, for these, you really need to score to get this line straight, but this is small enough that using a straight edge is kind of a waste. So we'll just freehand score this. Sometimes you have to kind of just figure out on your own where you're supposed to cut and where you're supposed to fold. All right, how to put, press this down? I think if I just draw on the back side with, with this pencil, I can use the pencil point to push it down and get it to stick. I prefer things with larger tabs. But seeing as someone was nice enough to give this away, I'm not going to, well, I am going to complain, I just did. But I'm not going to complain much. And there we go. A small, looks to me like an outhouse. But it's terrain that we can put on our table and drive our cars around, or possibly through. So I'll make up the rest of these show them to you and then I have one more thing to do for the build. So I'll be right back with these buildings. Here we have it. We've got some little shacks and we've got an auto dealership here with some pl places to park cars. So now we have some obstacles to put down on the board when we play. There's one more little customization. So here we have these cards for the cars. And they're nice and all. But they also seem to be just the right size for these. Now I have two kids. And both of them really liked cars when they were little, which means I have about 300 Matchbox cars. So I'm going to go through the ones that we have and see if I can find any that match up towards what we've got here. Like I think this one might do nicely here. Just off the top of my head. This one's kind, this GTI is kind of the shape of this, a little bit, maybe not so much. But I'm sure in all the Matchbox cars that I have, I can find some to match up. Now I'm going to match up four so that I can have four that are just cards and four that, that have cars attached. And once I find cars that match, I'm just going to glue them down onto here. I'll show those off when I get them mounted and we'll see how they look. So I'll be right back. I'm back for a quick update. I found this selection of cars and 
I'm going to, these were on RPG Now as a free download, a free extra for the game. So I'm going to put cars on these so that the original car cards, you know, double-sided ones, can stay just as a deck. So I found cars to use for these four. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse these, glue them together, and I'm going to use my laminator to laminate them so that they're nice and sturdy and can take having the car attached, and then I'm going to glue these cars on. So I'll be back when I have that done to show you what they look like and talk a little bit about how this game is going to work. Be right back. And I'm back. I have my laminated cards. I forgot to round the corners on these before I laminated them, but oh well. I'll survive. It's got description on the back. The lamination makes it fairly sturdy. So we'll just attach the car. I already glued these ones, but I don't think they're quite dry yet. I have my glue sitting upside down in a glass so that the glue is down towards the end. Now, we don't want the wheels turning. So we'll put a bunch of glue in between the wheel and the car and make sure there's a nice dab on the wheel there. We want lots of glue. This is PVC glue. This is tacky glue. So just fill up the gap between the car and the wheel and put some extra on top. And it dries clear, so there's no need to be fastidious about it. And we'll just set it on and let the glue do its thing. So this is going to take a while to dry. Tacky glue, when it's in globs like this, I mean, if you put it out smooth, you know, a thin layer, will dry in just a few minutes. But a big glob to hold something as large as this, which is what you need. You want lots of glue. You want the glue going all around the tires. And that much takes a long time to dry. Because the surface dries, and that makes the inside dry even slower. This is, you know, we're looking at overnight to, for this to be dry. But then we'll have our cars, and we've got our building stand-ups, and we'll be ready to play. And here we have it. The entire game of Outrider produced, including our extra stand-ups and our cars with cars. So, in a week or two, depending on when I can schedule actually playing the game, I will play this with one or both of my sons, and we'll see how it works. I'm really excited about this one. I've been a fan of Car Wars for some time. Love playing with Matchbox cars. And a simpler Car Wars. I mean, Car Wars is a great game. But it really wears 1970s on its sleeve. Or early 1980s. I don't know exactly when it came out. It's that kind of game. It's got the fiddliness and the complexity and the keeping track of things that games of that time had. Hopefully this does not. It looks like it's going to be put down some cards to show where you're moving, roll a die to see how far along that path you get, and take the shots that you're taking, and go to the next person. Really looking forward to it. We'll get to see it in a week, possibly two. Until then, have a good one.